Callum Brogan sent in McManaman dodging. McManaman scoring! Yes, what has gone on, everyone? Welcome back to GA Fan TV. What a game we have just witnessed between Wexford and Tipperary, one of the games of the year. Without doubt, a game that had absolutely everything controversial uh, refereeing decisions, goals, red cards, late drama, 48 points in total, just one of the iconic games in hurling, not just this year, but certainly in recent times. Um, an unbelievable display by these two counties. Tipperary, of course, coming out winners in the end uh, by a scoreline of 128 to 320. Tipperary though certainly should have had a lot more goals in this game. A lot of controversial decisions will certainly get into it in this video. But yeah guys, of course, first of all, if you are new around here, do hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the game. Um, and of course, uh, what do you think now going ahead into that all Ireland final between Tipperary and Kilkenny as well. Um, yeah, certainly in the opening stages. Wexford did come out the faster in the opening 10 to 15 minutes. Wexford just looked a little bit sharper in those opening stages. Um, and they were certainly winning a lot of the early puckouts. Um, but in fairness to Tipperary, Tipperary were certainly the more clinical of these two sides. Um, and certainly in the first half, uh, they definitely did grow into the game um, a lot more as the game, of course, uh, went on. Tipperary... Very good in possession a lot of the time. Noel McGrath, absolutely outstanding in this game. You know, in particular, um, you know, his display on the ball, his movement, his passing was absolutely fantastic. Jason Ford, of course, as well, was uh, absolutely fantastic again in this game. And, of course, Seamus Callanan as well. He got himself another goal for Tipperary. Seven goals now in succession for him this year. I mean, what a year he is having. And just in general, from this Tipperary side... Um, and you know, and once they started to really gain momentum and, and, and get into the game, you could tell that you know Wexford had to work a lot harder for their points, but Tipperary were just a lot more clinical. Um, and I feel like that was the main difference between these two sides throughout the game is that Tipperary uh, just had a lot more energy, a lot more skill, and they had a lot more forwards to hit it to. You know, with Wexford, you always felt like they were relying heavily on Lee Chin and Rory O'Connor. And I feel like when they started to fade in the second half towards the end of the game, that was really where the game was won and lost. Um, but of course, you know, Wexford did respond. They got themselves, um, you know, a massive goal as well, of course, um, to, to really pull the game um, back in Wexford, of course, then leading at that point by three points. But of course, then there was some, uh, you know, quite heavy controversy. Um, there was a free kick by, uh, by Lee Chin. Um, that he, um, you know, the, the free drop short, got, uh, Tipperary goalkeeper uh, ended up grabbing it. The ball uh, at the time looked like he, you know, kept it in, um, and Tipperary just went down the other end and ended up actually getting a goal. And it looked like at that point, then, you know, Tipperary have, have, have really switched the momentum and they should now uh, capitalize. But quite incredibly, the referee ended up pulling it back. And ended up saying that actually um, Lee Chin's free kick did actually go over the bar. The goalkeeper brought it over the bar when he caught it. Um, and I did feel like that was, um, you know, just, it was just a really strange decision. I mean, I understand that Tipperary goalkeeper Brian Hogan, um, you know, it did look like it went over the bar. But I just feel like that 30 second gap was very strange in my opinion. It certainly doesn't take that long normally for Hawkeye to come into effect. They were saying on the Sunday game it can take you know around 30 to 35 seconds. I, I don't agree with that in my opinion. It normally is a lot quicker. Um, and there was even a stoppage in between that. Tipperary actually got a free uh, shortly after that. So you know th there was a real chance there for, for a referee to stop the game and for someone to, to notify the referee as, as to what was going on. Um, it certainly wasn't the referee's fault in my opinion on that occasion. Um, but certainly a lot of miscommunication and that will certainly cause a debate for technology to be introduced into the GEA a lot more in terms of uh, helping out the referee. Um, I thought the referee had a really poor game today. There was a lot of uh, free kicks that, uh, you know, a lot of frees that just weren't frees in my opinion. Um, of course, he had an early Tipperary goal in the opening stages that was ruled out that was quite harsh in my opinion. Um, and of course, you know, that goal towards the end as well was very strange. Uh, the referee seemed to play the advantage. Um, the ball was then hooked in. 
I think it was by uh, Brendan Marr, uh, if, if I'm right. I think it was one of, might have been one of the Tipperary forwards. I can't quite remember as to who actually hit that in the back of the net. But um, long story speaking, the referee then gave a penalty. Um, so he called back the advantage and then he gave a free. So it was very strange uh, decision making from the referee all around. Um, there was a couple of chances he could have gave a few yellow cards, a couple of heavy challenges. Some he gave, some he didn't. A lot of inconsistency all around from the referee. Um, so it was a disappointing performance from him in many ways and from, I think, you know, he didn't get much help from the umpires in many ways. Um, even when Wexford got their goal, he wasn't sure about it. Their second goal I'm talking about. So um, certainly was a strange game in that aspect, aspect from the referee, um, you know, but certainly going into the second half, they were very aware touch and go. I mean, one thing was Wexford always just seemed to have the lead. Uh, Tipperary... Um, I think only went in front really in the closing stages of this game. Wexford just always seemed to have uh, the momentum, and um, you know, any time it looked like Tipperary were going to pull away, Wexford would then go the other, go down the other end and, and get a goal. Leach in got himself a goal. I think it was another goal as well from um, from McDonald. You know, and, and Wexford were just very good at, at pulling this game back, and, and Tipperary at times. Um, couldn't really deal with some of Wexford's energy, but I think at the same time, big difference between these two sides in the closing stages was that Tipperary just probably had a bit more experience, and they were a lot more calmer in attack, um, and Wexford did at times, you know, have some you know pop shots here and there, specifically in the closing stages, um, and I do think uh, the puckouts were a big difference as well. Wexford from their puckouts always went long, which worked quite well against Kilkenny. But I think, you know, when you're going up against a quality defender like Podrick Marr, it's always going to be very difficult to win them puck outs. And I feel like maybe in the closing stages, when specifically when Wexford had a five-point lead, they could have gone to the shore puck out and tried to work things that way and been a bit more clever um, and experienced. And I feel like that might have helped them in actually seeing this game out. Um, but in the end, of course, Tipperary... Just had that be too much. And even though John McGrath got sent off as well, um, it, you know, it looked like that was going to be the turning point because Wexford actually got the goal shortly after that. Um, and it did look like Wexford were, were going to pull away, especially with the momentum from the crowd. Uh, but Tipperary just, you know, had a bit too much in the end. Wexford, as I said, you know, I think they only hit one point um, in the remaining like 20 to 30 minutes of that game. Uh, I think they actually had two points and both of them were frees. Um, so... It did go to show that Tipperary are really starting to dominate possession um, and really start to dominate the uh, the puckouts. Um, but I think all in all, you know, fantastic performance by Tipperary. Bubbles Outdoor as well was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, Brendan Marr, Porrick Marr, great displays from them. And, and Tipperary in the end just about deserved it. Um, you know, I think it would have been controversial had they have lost this game. Um, I don't think Liam Sheedy wouldn't, uh, you know, he would have been very annoyed in, 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 you know, his interview after. He certainly wouldn't be, have been as happy as he was, obviously, because his team won. Um, but certainly, uh, a lot of questions need to come into the, into question for the for the referee. But I think for Tipperary, you know, great result for them. They move, you know, they march on to the All Ireland final. Um, I feel like they can win it, in my opinion. You know, I feel like Lip Limerick hit 17 wides yesterday. Um, you know, Cork missed a lot of chances when they played Kilkenny as well. I just feel like Tipperary won't be as wasteful as that. They are a team that does have All Ireland winners in this team from when they last won an All Ireland in 2016, I think it was. So, um, so yeah, it should be a very interesting All Ireland final when it comes around. Uh, do keep an eye on the channel. I will be doing a preview for that. But anyway, guys, Tipperary march on to the All Ireland final. Do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the game. And I will catch you all next time.